Welcome to room 101, the place where your worst fears and nightmares are banished. We're going to have a little bit of a game, but it's also quite serious. So the underlying motivation for this is the fact that words matter. Words are important, and we need to take control of the narrative. So we're going to talk about some stuff today, and we're going to talk about words and language, and you're going to get to vote on deciding what gets banished to room 101. Okay, so I'm going to explain everything now. I'm the chair. I'm Paul Merton, or what was the other guy called? Frank Skinner. Frank Skinner. Yeah, I'm definitely, I'm, definitely, I'm definitely Paul Merton. I don't want to go that far back. Um, right, so here are the rules. So pay attention, right? These are the rules. So there's two teams. We have Team A over here, which is Team Hudson, and Team B over here, which is Team Russell. Yay! <laughs> They're going to take it in turns what to ban, right? So we're going to have one person from Team A doing the, a thing to ban, and then Team B gets to respond, and then Team A gets to respond again, right? Uh, they have one minute to pitch, one minute to respond, and one minute to get to feedback on the responses, right? Then you guys get to vote. Now, on your tables, you've all got these things. So red, it's going in the bin. Green, it's not going in the bin. Okay, so pretty easy. I mean, you are market researchers. One hopes that some kind of binary system is going to work with you guys. Um, and that's how it's going to work. And then I am going to look at the audience and see how many are red and see how many are green. And I'm going to make the ultimate decision on what goes in the bin. You will notice that each of the uh, team members have brought an object for me to place in the bin, which summarizes their pitch. Right, okay, so those are the rules. These are the teams. So as I said, we have Team A over here, which is Paul Hudson. And we've got, with Paul, we've got James, and we've got Yozetta, who is standing in for Nicola, who's got COVID. So Yozetta is literally giving Nicola's pitch. Um, and then over here, we have Team Russell, and we have Danny, and we have Shanaz, and we have Lisa. So these are the people who are going to um, pitch everything for you. And as I said, I, I get to decide at the end, so it's great. It's really good. Uh, right. So without further ado, I am going to ask the chair of Team A to start telling us why we need to ditch the debrief. OK, so the debrief, by its very nature, it signifies the end of something, whereas in reality, that's the beginning of an insights journey through an organization. And just like these, if you use it with the word brief, brief and debrief, it's a bit like these bookends. Nicely boxes something up into a project in the middle, just like the bookends do. But that's a problem. In today's world, it's a continuously changing world. Gartner themselves recognize that an effective decision is a continuous one. You need to hold everything in continuous flux to make a good decision. Decisions don't end. They need to constantly evolve. And by using the word debrief, we're constraining ourselves to nightly, nicely wrapping things up into a boxed up beginning and end. Whereas re really, if we want to be decision consultants, we need to move beyond an ending and live with insights through the organization and beyond that point. Yes. Well done. <laughs> Brilliant. Thank you very much. Now, Team B gets a chance to ask questions, respond, interrogate. Off you go. And that, that is the first time we've heard that. We haven't, rehe we haven't rehearsed it that much. Uh, it's fair, I'd say. Fair argument. Um, my question would be, uh, we've got three challenges. First problem is that the debrief represents one of the very, very few times that you get all the key stakeholders in the room at the same time. It's a big show, it's a big opportunity to impress uh, the stakeholders. That's our first challenge. So Paul, as a client side researcher, I'd really challenge oh. you on that. That's gone off. <laughs> I don't know why that happened. I'm gonna have to go back. All right. Yeah, Sorry. so as a client-side researcher, I'd like to challenge you on that. For me, it's an opportunity 
to challenge the outputs and also build on the insights and have a real discussion about it. And as someone that wears two hats, so client side now, but agency before, um, how can you even know that you know these stakeholders have actually sort of understood what you've just presented? Because if you do away with something like that, you've got absolutely no idea if everyone that's invested or should be invested in that room actually gets to hear it in one go. Um, Time's up. Yep. So. Okay. Right. I'm now going to give you the time to answer. I hope the thing works better this time. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell. I've never used technology. <laughs> All right, I've got it. It's working. So I don't want to remove an event. The wording the debrief is the problem. It constrains our thinking <laughs> to being the end of something. In everything you've just said, you've signified my point, that it's actually the beginning, the point, the culmination of bringing people together. The debrief is the problem because it signifies how we think about it. So let's use other terminology that helps us build partnerships and move beyond that point. I'm so sorry. Right. Have we finished that round? I don't know why the alarm's going off. Completely the wrong. So give me your give me your item. Give me your bookends. Right, guys, you have 20 seconds if the thing works to think about your vote and to cast your vote on whether we're going to ban the debrief. Which one's going in, red or green? Uh, if you vote, you vote red, it goes in the bin. You vote green, you save it. Okay. All right? You've all got red and green. I'm going to have to get up on the stage and have a look. Yeah, it should be the other way around. Oh, is it? Sorry, I thought it was the other way around. Well, we, we're going to ditch it. Red for the bin. 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 Oh, my God. I think, okay, I'm going to have a shout out. Everyone who votes it in the bin, go I. I. Everyone who votes it, save it, go I. I. I think the Reds have it. It's in the bin. And I'm sorry my alarm's not working. <laughs> right, okay. Now, we're moving on to our next lead, team leader, Team Russell, the next thing we're going to discuss and ban, or not, is a seat at the table. Right. Danny's got his seat. A seat at the table. Having a chief insight officer on the board. What a brilliant idea. So why am I looking to banish it? I'll give you two reasons. The first one is, it ain't never going to happen. Right? I'm old. I was in Birmingham. 30 years ago, listening to people standing on stage going, oh, we need a seat at the table, we need a seat at the table. All the time, right? If it hasn't happened in 30 years, it ain't going to happen. Let's stop banging our heads against the wall. Second reason, probably more important, it's just not the way to influence decision-making in organizations. Okay? Most board meetings, they have pre-read papers going out a week in advance, Everything's been decided. All those decisions have already been debated, discussed, and agreed. Okay? All, the, all, the be, all the board meeting is doing is rubber stamping it. Okay? Much more important for us to have a seat at many tables. Yeah. There's no way the timer, there's no yeah, way the minute. It was, it was a full minute. <laughs> <laughs> we, need, we need a seat Hello. at many tables. Okay? We want customer saliency, we want insights. Get Omnipotent time across time the organization. Time time. I can't believe the time has not worked. I'm taking your chair. It was a full minute. <laughs> Got it. Right. OK. So we have now, Team A, a chance to respond, and hopefully you'll have a minute if it works. Um, so as someone who is client-side and who has had a seat at the table, it doesn't mean a physical seat at the table, um, but I've seen firsthand... Uh, senior decision makers attributing up to 10% extra budget to insights because we were in the pre-read and we were at the table and therefore the decisions trickled down from there. Uh, yeah, and I would add to that. So it describes, an English dictionary describes around a situation in which someone is included in a discussion which can influence decisions that are taken. Do we really not want that? And I would add also that really you're just being grammatical. You're just changing one word from the to many. 
Oh. <laughs> a weak thing. Sing singular words, yeah, singular words are significant and important, as we all, as we all qualitative researchers know in the room. Um, you actually answered your own question there, Mr. Hudson. Uh, the dictionary definition is singular, and we want a seat at many tables uh, and not a singular seat. What happens if you're ill when the board meeting is on. You're just, you're just playing with words. Hang on, he's not playing with the odd word. Huh? He, there's no time for him to start heckling me. Well, you did run over. No, that was the timer that was I wrong. Know, it, it wasn't wrong. You've still got 30 seconds. Oh, right, OK. Um, and in response, can I have a show of hands here of anybody that knows of a chief insight officer who sits on the board? Not that has a title, chief insight it's officer, that sits on the board, apart from James thing. Sallows. Hands up. <laughs> no. I rest my case. Oh, OK. Fair enough. Right, OK. Now we've got... Vote to ban... A seat at the table. Here is the seat. And what's what's what are they putting up if they want to they, put, put it into the bin? It, you ban it by voting it down into the bin. Okay. That's what we did last so time. So reds. So red if you want to ban it, green if you want to save it. Everybody vote, please, now. Oh. Quite clearly oh. quite quite clearly red. I don't know. I think that I think I it's I think from a visible I, I think it's definitely green. The greens have it. The Greens have it. We're not banning it. We're not banning it. Right, are we ready? Next one. Wait a minute. These, I think it might be so, good. say hello to Agent Smith, who comes to represent everything around the term data-driven. Dashboards, platforms, streams of unintelligible numbers. The challenge is we have actually commoditized ourselves as an industry over the years by embracing this term so wholeheartedly, whilst others have done exactly the same. Where are the budgets going? Marketers, data-driven. Data teams, data-driven. Tech teams, data-driven. See where the budgets are going. They're not going to us. We have to fight to be relevant. We have to fight to be heard. If we know what a brand is, it has to be distinctive. How are we distinctive when we're simply data-driven? Is it a focus of what we do? Yes. Is it critical? To what we do? Absolutely. Is it the beginning, middle, and end of everything that every one of you does in this room? Of course not. Data can fuel us, but insights and intelligence have to drive us. Just as an aside, this guy, beaten by human creativity and the unexpected human behavior of Neo. <laughs> Very good timing. Very good timing. Right. You've got a chance to respond. <laughs> we do, and our response is, first one is that data provides statistical confidence and certainty. Can all the quantitative researchers put their hands up, please? What would you do without statistical significance and confidence? <laughs> <laughs> So, James, I put it to you that CFOs and C CEOs are data-driven, and without this, you'd become detached from the two most important people in the room. Good point. <laughs> 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 I'm not in the room, you said. <laughs> 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 you didn't vote for it. <laughs> Come on, you've only got 15 seconds. All right, OK, very important. Um, any time, any time that you know we we are doing any kind of research, um, the crux of it is is all about data. It's data-driven insights. If you don't do that, you may as well not have any research on the table or in the room because you'd be shooting from the hip, like a lot of our clients and stakeholders like to. Uh, so you need to be data-driven. Otherwise, okay. what's the point? Okay, time's up. You're just making stuff Would up. Would you like to respond? <laughs> Okay, so I would challenge that um, our definition of data-driven is very different to okay. the definition of the CEOs and the CFOs, because their end game is a dashboard, a traffic light, a number. But the challenge is, from a client side, where do you go from there? I've been in so many conversations where you have a number, so what? And that's their interpretation of data-driven. The investment goes into building the data sets and the platforms to get a number. It's not invested into understanding that number and the drivers of that. <laughs> and, and we are speaking the language of the CFOs and the CMOs because we are providing the data. I never at one point said it wasn't key. I said it fuels us. 
So Reviewing basically, the previous sessions, the statistical confidence was only one of the three areas of trust um, that we also had, and the messenger uh, in the session, if you went to the McDonald's session. Uh, and that behavioral science metric is very important because it's about confidence in what you hear and the way in which it's delivered. And we all know that as a sector, we need to lean into storytelling and we need to lean into advocacy within our businesses, not just the data. So ba basically your responses to both okay. of our challenges were that the debrief and data driven aren't actually what you meant. Oh, well, words matter. <laughs> right, oh, hang on, where's the, ag where's the agent? Oh, I've got my agent. Right, okay, it's time to vote. Right, could you vote now to ban or keep data driven? So, red bans it in the bin. Do you want to be insight driven or data driven? Or do you want to be oh, data oh, 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 that is changing. <laughs> uh, is he the going narrative. in the bin? He's going in the bin! Yeah! Oh, you brought me a small one. <laughs> yeah, he's in the bin. Is this on? Okay. Oh, all right. Excellent. Uh, right, sorry, next one. Who have we got up next? Oh, we've got Shnav next. Right. Okay, let me have to get the. Oh, for God's sake. Come on, Lucy. I'm trying, I'm trying. Okay, here we go. Okay, ready, Shanaz? I'm All right. Click the cut starter now. Okay, so what I want to put in room number one is. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I like that. Social economic classification or groupings. I could hear some yeses already. <laughs> Super simple, six alphabets, but really, how relevant is anyway? This was invented in 1913. That's 101 years old. You know, I mean, World War I happened in 1914, so you can just imagine everything that's happened since. So SEGs, SECs, call it what you like. Um, it's, it's all based on occupation, which I personally think is completely outdated. So as a researcher, spent more than two decades in the space. When I started as a researcher, I was the same SEG as I am now 20-something years on. You know, I've changed, my spending power has changed, what I look at in the world has changed, and yet we are still abiding by those same uh, sort of rules and classifications. I'll give you a real life example, I'm loving the nods by the way, remember what you have to do, red, um, <laughs> is, you know, you've got to influence the mind, we're researchers after all, um, is, you know, oh, oh, ah! time's up, time's up. I can oh. answer it in the next bit. Though, you can so answer the next okay. bit, yeah. yeah. Give me your object. So, I just thought, you know. Flat cap. Oh, flat cap. <laughs> there you go. Right, okay. So, um, you've got a chance to respond, Team A. You get your questions now. Yes. So, good argument, but we do need simple constructs to help our communication across organisations. And whilst I agree that the flat cap is a good prop, it indicates it's out of date, do we not just need to update it like they recently did in India, where they had the similar problem and recognised it and changed it? Um, I'd also challenge with what do we update it with? Having been agency side, the number of briefs I got that asked for millennials, Gen Zs, all these other things to try and replace it, it's not suitable. Um, and then on the last point, we'd go, well, um, every major platform industry needs a common language. And you can always criticize it and take its pieces, but you need to have some consistency across multiple platforms, multiple vendors in the, in the whole ecosystem of our sector. Let me bring it to you. The last time this was changed was 2001, okay? It was 2024. Um, yes, of course we get briefs. Yes, a common language is important, but that's not what I'm arguing about, and I'm not here to reinvent it just now. I'm just saying that needs to go in the bin. Because if I think about briefs, you know, you, I work in the travel sector. Oh, Chanel's, you know, ABC ones. And, you know, I mean, those are homogenous groups in terms of occupation. I just gave you a great example. But, you know, I know that my electrician, I'm a Londoner, so you can imagine how much electricians um, charge. There's lots of laughter, yep. So, but that electrician mm. somewhere else in part of the country could be earning something different. But I know that my electrician has more more spending power as a C2 and would be comfortably left off a brief, left off advertising, left off targeting, when it's good money that we could be cashing in on collectively. <laughs> so I think you're missing a point here. But you can just update. That's just, not the just point modern. here. It's not the question. You're deviating and that's what this is about. We Brilliant. absolutely need to come up with a new language, but the current one just isn't working. It's not fit for purpose anymore. Okay. Lots of nods. This is good. Pardon? You may do, but that's not common parlance. I know in the US they do that, but again, that's a different. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we want this banished. We want a new language. Right. I want just collectively to come up with something. Time's else. up. 
OK, you guys have got a chance to vote now. If you vote it into the bin, it is red. If you vote to keep it, it is green. It is red. The caps in the bin. <laughs> right. I think currently the score is 2-1. So, no, 2-1. You should be careful now. OK, right, now we have, we're going to move on, sorry, these slides. Right, so Nicola, a.k.a. Josefta, who has stepped in at the last minute, on hypotheses. Right, so today I'm bringing a very topical prop, a COVID test. <laughs> when you take a COVID test, you don't get to find out how you got infected or why you got infected. All you get is a yes or no answer. No context, just facts. In the same way, yes or no hypotheses limit the way we think. They really reduce our research to merely chemical test type statements that really don't allow us to do our job. Let's take, for example, ice cream. So does it really matter if the favorite flavor is chocolate? What you want to find out is how do consumers actually, when do they eat it? How do, how do they like it? In this way, as in Insight, we are the translators. Well, you are the translators. You are the enablers for finding the right business questions. And you cannot do that if all you, all you have, it's a series of yes or no. So I'm here today to ditch yes or no hypothesis in favor of effective questions. Thank you. I didn't click the button right. Very well done. Um, I didn't click the button correctly. Sorry, this is not working very well. But okay, Team B, would you like a time? Would you like a chance to uh, respond to that? Uh, yes, we certainly would. Um, first of all, well done for Yaseta because she only picked this up yesterday. So well done, Yaseta. Uh, but um, uh, that's their kind of sense. Yeah. Uh, the challenge is that listen, if you don't go in to the research with a hypothesis, it will bite you on the ass um, when you come to the debrief because hypotheses uh, are often formed around politics and internal views. Uh, you go in blind. You are a lamb to the slaughter. So you haven't got a debrief. Yes. So the, que the question. The, you, know, you haven't got a debrief. That's true. They got rid of it. Um, yeah, that was, that was a question. That was a question. That was a challenge. Yeah? So, Yuzetta, my, my challenge is that a hypothesis is a starting point, an anchor point for you that you can either prove or disprove. What have you got without it? And I think even more importantly, with a hypothesis, whether it's coming from you or ideally coming from your client, is... You talked about ice cream or vanilla ice cream or whatever ice cream, but if you went in with, without a hypothesis of what kind of flavor or even eating occasions about ice cream, maybe you're looking at, I don't know, parfaits, what do we have for lunch? Or were those, I don't know, those little crostini things? Or you might be going for a complete different dessert. You know, you've got to have an idea. Otherwise, you're just basically, hunt, you know, just fishing. In a, in a big pond of desserts, or I don't know, tourist masseuse, or <laughs> pizza. I don't know. It could be any food type that gives you satisfaction, you know, and makes you happy. Okay. So you need a hypothesis. It's not ringing for some reason, but your time's up. Great. Okay, response, please. Uh, okay, well, interesting, Danny, you gave me a great answer to one of your questions, which is yes, hypothesis are often politics, um, but any of you who are in agencies will know quite often your client doesn't know what they're doing. Um, <laughs> and I say that as a client. And some of the best agencies are the ones that challenge the hypothesis. They challenge the client's thinking, and they challenge those politics. They you, are need the a, ones you need a hypothesis to challenge. They are the ones who go further. You've just got rid of the hypothesis. Look, what am I challenging? And who look for a new truth that maybe the business hasn't considered. The future of this industry is more than an A-B test. Yes, it is. Oh, oh profound. Which is, where you, which is where it goes if it's just that. Okay, would you like to, um, I think we've done my responses to that. I'm going to have to try and just click on, I do apologise. Okay, guys, hurrah, we have the COVID test. <laughs> Who wants to put the COVID test in the bin? Green, not to put it in the bin. Red, to put it in the bin. Oh, we're definitely keeping the COVID test. We're keeping the hypotheses. Sorry, sorry, definitely not happening. So now I think, that was it. I think we might, we might be, yeah, oh, you want to? No, it's five minutes. Five minutes. Five minutes. Five minutes. Five minutes.
Oh, I've got my five minutes. Sorry, I thought you wanted to do something. Yeah, that's fine. We've got one more. Right, OK, yes. let's get this on. So the last one, <laughs> finally, from Team B is market research. Right. <laughs> it's, it's ticking. So, yes, a little bit controversial given we're at the Market Research Society conference today. So, but room 101 is controversial. Right, so I want to bin the term market research as I believe it's no longer reflective of our industry and what we do and the value we bring. Um, market research is um, a description of the process. We are so much more now than the process. It's all, now it's about outcome, insights, interpretation. It just doesn't reflect what we do. And I think it's also really quite degrading of people and consumers putting them into markets, look, and it's looking at mass market rather than individuals. And certainly a lot of the research I've done, it's about individuals. And yep. very quickly, other industries... <laughs> no, time's up, time's up. OK, quickly, Team A, you get a chance to respond. So this is a term that is embedded in textbooks taught in business schools, marketing courses around the world. It even, oh. has, <laughs> it even has its own SIC code, 73, if you're interested, oh. <laughs> defines advertising and market research as a sector and industry. So we're going to rebrand. Okay. What are we going to do with that? Um, it's about being distinctive and the value of brands. I said that before in my, my data-driven piece, which is, are we going to do away with all that? It's just taken you a minute and you didn't even get to the end of describing why we needed to get rid of it. I would say to you, consignia, anybody? Tropicana packaging. Who X's or who tweets? Hallion. Who uses Meta and who uses Facebook? <laughs> can, we, can we really get rid of something that is defined in all of those places? And we're not in control of what it's called. Other people are using that term anyway. So we can sit in a room here and come up with a name, but we can't change all those textbooks, all that history, that SIC code. We're okay, not in control of those up. things. Lisa. And that value. Good, good points, but <laughs> Thank you. I really don't think it describes the enormity and importance of what we do. Other sectors and industries have renamed themselves. So um, air hostesses are now flight attendants, lollipop men and ladies are now um, crossing patrol officers and... <laughs> And, and <coughs> it's a good example, that one. <laughs> <laughs> and wait for it, wait for it. Undertakers and our funeral directors. Oh. If these industries can update themselves, why can't we? Oh, very good question. OK, are we ready to vote? Vote now on whether we ditch market research or whether we... Save it. Red goes in the bin. Ooh. Come on, everybody gets to vote. Come on, come on, come on. Everybody voting. Oh, my God. Uh, OK, I want you to shout. I want you to shout market research if you want to keep it. OK, if you want to ditch market research, I want you to shout market research. Market research. It's definitely going in the bin. And where's the clipboard? There's the clipboard going in the bin. Right, so I think at the end of the day, we had a draw. Oh, that's really, that's tragic, isn't it? I really wish we had a, well, I wish we won. But anyway, thank you very, very much. I hope we've actually proved some interesting points here about the validity and importance of narrative and, and uh, of words and controlling the, the narrative. So thank you very much.